everyone. Uh, here I am with today's Passover story. Um, oh, I'm Elise, uh, the Director of Education at the Danforth Jewish Circle, and I've been reading these Passover books online Tuesdays at 1, Thursdays at 10. Um, and today's story is brought to you <laughs> by Flamingo Rampant, which is a wonderful little micro press. Um, uh, I want to tell you about them, but they do a better job of explaining themselves than I can. So I'm going to read to you from the back of the book. It says, Flamingo Rampant is a micro press with a mission to produce feminist, racially diverse, LGBTQ positive children's books in an effort to bring visibility and positivity to the reading landscape of children everywhere. We make books kids love that love them right back, bedtime stories for beautiful dreams, and books that let children of all kinds say with pride, that kid's just like me. So um, that's where we've got this book. We're so lucky Flamingo Rampant um, produced a Passover book. So this book is called The Last Place You Look. Um, what do you think they're going to be looking for in this book? Maybe you have an idea already. This book is written by J. Wallace Skelton and illustrated by Justin Alves. So here we are. I'm going to move over a little because this book's um, a bit wide. So. I want you to make sure you can see the pictures. This way, okay. It was Pesach, Passover, and the whole family gathered at the Bubby's apartment for the Seder. We had to squeeze in, but as Bubby Rose says, love makes enough room. We blessed and ate the green vegetables, and Bubby Ida Flora broke the middle matzah. Later, she said, looking at all the children, you will need to find this or we won't be able to end the meal. There will be prizes, added Bobby Rose, as Bobby Ida Flora walked into the kitchen, taking the middle matzah, the apikomen, out of sight. Here, we might want to see this picture a bit close. There she goes with the afikomen. The Seder continued. There were funny parts and sad parts, hot spicy horseradish and sweet haroset. Oro and Sura sang a song about slavery. And we talked about what we can do to bring peace and justice in the world. We ate. The boobies had cooked for days. There were a lot of people, but there was even more food. Abigail declared that the matzo ball soup was the best ever, and both bubbies grinned from ear to ear. When everyone had eaten their fill, and a little bit more, Bubby Rose announced it was time for the children to find the afikomen. All the children got up from the table and began to search. Laurel searched along the top of the bookshelf, carefully feeling each book. She didn't find the afikomen, but she did find a little pouch. Aha, she said, holding the pouch high. It must be in here. But inside the pouch were bracelets, not matzah. Zach searched the kids' stay-over bedroom, climbing over coffee tables and chairs. He didn't find the afikomen, but he did find a little locked metal box. Is it in here, he asked. No, said Bobby Ida Flora in a happy voice, but now our ancestors can join us at the Seder. And she opened the tin and took out the old family photos. That's this page. Oops. Delta searched behind and under the couch. She even made everyone sitting on the couch get up so she could reach under the cushions. As she slipped her hand in, she heard a crunch. I found it, she shouted but the crunch turned out to be Bobby Rose's old reading glasses. They've been gone so long, I got new ones, she exclaimed. Oro searched the under the table. He was sure he would find the afikomen taped to the underside of the table. He found an envelope. This year I win, he said from under the tablecloth, but inside the envelope were baseball tickets, not matzah. I still think I won, he said. Asher searched through the pockets of the coats in the hall. There were 19 coats. 
He didn't find the afikomen, but he did find $5.35 in change. Can I keep it, he asked. The grown-ups agreed it should go into the tzedakah tin instead. Zip searched the kitchen. They'd seen Bubby Ida Flora take it in there and were sure that's where it was. They didn't find the afikomen, but they did find dessert. Zip tasted the chocolate-dipped orange peel, ate a fat macaroon, and didn't say anything. Sura searched low to the floor. She climbed into the pot cupboard in the kitchen and looked into people's shoes. She didn't find the afikomen, but she did find out that some people need to put powder in their shoes. Yuck. There she is saying yuck when she smells the stinky shoes. Nobody found the afikomen. Booby Ida Flora looked worried. I hid the afikomen, but I'm not sure where, she said quietly. Well, said Booby Rose, it'll be in the last place you look. Zack searched the bathroom, even though he was pretty sure it would not be there. He didn't find the afikomen, but he did find a goldfish. We were told a pet would help us get more exercise, said Bubby Ida Flora, but it doesn't seem to work. Everyone laughed. Delta looked at Levi. Did you eat the afikomen? No, Laurel answered for Levi. A guide dog would never do that. Well, said Delta, could she sniff it out then? But Levi was Laurel's guide dog, not a sniffer dog. She wasn't going to be able to solve the mystery. Oral remembered that Bubby Ida Flora was wearing an apron when she broke the middle nutsa and went looking for that, but he couldn't find the apron either. How can so many things go missing in so small a space? asked Zip. Asher searched through the laundry, but couldn't find either the apron or the afikomen. Aaron said, it's getting late. Maybe we should all just sit down again and finish the Seder without the afikomen. Without the afikomen, everyone shouted at once. But they had looked everywhere, and it was nowhere to be found. So they sat back down. As Sura sat down, she heard a crunch. She was sitting on Booby Ida Flora's apron, and the afikomen was still in the pocket. Ah, said Bobby Ida Flora, I couldn't remember where I'd hid it because I didn't hide it at all. The apartment hid it for me. I told you, said Bobby Rose with a wink, it would be in the last place you look. Everyone laughed. She opened the pouch that had been in the first place they'd searched and gave every child a bracelet with their names on it, engraved and in braille. It's a cool gift. Look at this. And here they are saying, Lashana haba Yerushalayim, next year in freedom. I hope that you enjoyed that book, and I'm sure some of you are going to do some very creative afikomen hiding and hunting this year. Um, and that can still be a really exciting part of Passover and a part of your Seder, even if your Seder um, is going digital this year. And um, uh, I want to also say that um, in this time when a lot of Seders are moving online, we can also use this opportunity to think about people who might be getting left out of Seders this year um, and how easy it is to invite people. At the beginning of this book, um, the Bubby said, uh, love makes enough room. And I think that's a good lesson that we can learn from this book too. So I want to let you know on Thursday, I'm going to be doing another story. It's gonna be something very creative to end off the Passover book reading. Uh, and that's gonna be Thursday at 10 a.m. And I look forward to seeing you there. Bye-bye.